Is the 500 mile range of the Tesla Semi really enough to make it a no compromises replacement for diesel semi trucks? Or are the critics right when they call it impractical and point to issues like winter range loss? In this video, I wanna discuss a little bit about the real world range of the Tesla Semi and why it actually is a practical replacement for somewhere around 87% of semi truck loads. Yes, even in cold temperatures. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. As a reminder, the 500 mile range number that Tesla lists for their semi truck is not when the truck is empty or with a very small load. It is the amount of range as they state on their website, quote, fully loaded at 82,000 pounds gross combination weight. In addition to that fully loaded, it looks like the Tesla Semi should actually be able to go a little bit more than 500 miles because as was revealed at the PepsiCo delivery event last year, Tesla demonstrated this range in a 500 mile drive from Fremont to San Diego, California. And if you look closely at the battery state of charge percentages in this chart, you can see that it only took around 93% of the battery capacity of the truck to make the 500 mile trip. And this chart Chart also shows that this was not a flat drive, but actually this drive features some pretty serious elevation changes and steep roads to climb. And much of the extra energy that was needed to climb up the elevation was regained on the way back down thanks to regenerative braking. Beyond Tesla's tests, PepsiCo, of course, owns a number of these Tesla semis, and based on a video that was published by the North American Council for Freight Efficiency, or NACFE, um, and I talked about this in a previous video, but based on information that was presented in this video and uh, comments like, for instance, from Dayan and Tunavik, PepsiCo does use Tesla semis in longer routes up to 450 miles. Now, in a video that I previously published on the topic of the Tesla Semi, there was more than one person who pointed to potential issues driving the Tesla Semi in winter conditions. However, I believe the Tesla Semi can function in cold temperatures. And at Big Ben from La Mesa, who has been very helpful in the YouTube comments section of Tesla Semi videos that I've published, Big Ben specifically addressed the Tesla Semi in cold winter driving by writing, quote, Tesla semis will, of course, lose some range at cold temperatures, just as diesel semis do, but this will be minimized by advanced battery temperature management and in any event is completely predictable so dispatchers and drivers can plan around it. And Tesla semis will do better than diesels in snow and ice for at least three reasons. First, a substantial portion of the weight of the tractor will be shifted back to the drive axles due to improved weight distribution of the batteries increasing traction. Second, the smooth application of torque by the electric motors compared with transmissions shifting every few seconds will mean less wheel spin. And third, the torque axle has independent motors on each wheel, allowing torque vectoring in limited traction situations. I did want to clarify here that I believe the Tesla Semi does have a tri-motor powertrain because that's what was revealed and discussed at the delivery event last year. Now, when it comes to electric vehicles and range loss in the winter, yes, that is a thing. And electric vehicles do lose quite a bit of range in cold temperatures. For instance, if you go over to tessie.com forward slash stats, you can see here that based on Tessie's data, and if you're not familiar with Tessie, Tessie does have a phone application that allows you to connect to your uh, Tesla vehicle and gather quite a bit of data about that vehicle. But based on information from over 76 million drives, you can see here the efficiency of Tesla's vehicles by temperature. And pretty much at 10 degrees Fahrenheit, each one of these vehicles have a little bit over 60% efficiency. So you can expect around a 40% loss with Tesla's vehicles at 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So while the Tesla Semi may have a 500 mile range in the summer, at 10 degrees Fahrenheit, you could expect that range could drop to around 300 miles of range. And also with an electric vehicle, if you wanna keep good battery health, it's a good idea not to completely discharge the battery and not to regularly charge to 100%. So for instance, if you regularly don't let the vehicle drop below a 10% state of charge and you only charge to 90%, that gives you 80% 
of the battery there that you're commonly using, and that means around 80% of the range. So really during the summer, if you use 80% of the range to uh, maintain good battery health, that would be 400 miles of drivable summer range and around 240 during the winter. Now I will put those ranges in perspective and um, show how they're actually enough for the vast majority of semi-truck loads. But I wanna share some feedback based on two professional semi-truck drivers about traditional semi-trucks and winter issues. Because it's not like traditional diesel semi-trucks don't have winter issues as well, and they also lose efficiency during the winter. For example, I reached back out to Luke, a professional class eight truck driver with 20 years or so of experience, but I asked Luke specifically about how cold weather affects diesel semi fuel efficiency. And Luke responded, quote, efficiency does go down a bit during winter, but not to a degree that it becomes a serious concern for the driver. My main concern during winter is fuel gelling. During cold weather, paraffin wax and diesel fuel can begin to crystallize, clogging fuel lines and filters. This requires adding chemicals to the tank at every fuel stop, and in some extreme cases, electric heaters wrapped around the fuel tanks or leaving the truck running at idle overnight. During the winter, the additives placed in the fuel cut efficiency by about 3%, but this is well worth it when avoiding gelling. When idling, the truck can cost one gallon per hour. Later model trucks have an auxiliary power unit and heater, which cuts this to about one tenth of a gallon per hour. This unit keeps the bunk warm and keeps the fuel heated enough to avoid gelling. So I thought those responses from Luke were very helpful, but I also found some responses that a driver named Craig shared with me. And I asked that same question of Craig in an email and Craig wrote, quote, first thing is fuel additives. $20 treats 250 gallons. When the temperature goes below 20 degrees Fahrenheit, we start to add this to the fuel to prevent gelling. As soon as you hit negative one Fahrenheit, we use the same quantity to treat 125 gallons. Then you have to consider runtime. Trucks will run almost constantly in the winter. Our fleet trucks do not shut off if below negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. When it's not that cold, they are plugged in with a block heater and a 30 minute warm up per shift. The increased idling causes increased DEF consumption. Now beyond all that, Craig also gave an important number that I believe is really helpful. And Craig wrote, quote, if I had to put a number on it, we lose 20% or more on short haul fuel economy, considering all the complications with diesel. So yes, the Tesla Semi will lose some range during the winter, and that number could be around 40% if it mirrors the rest of Tesla's lineup. But diesel trucks have issues during the winter as well and do lose efficiency, as these two pro truck drivers pointed out. Now going back to the topic of how much range is needed to replace a diesel semi-truck. According to a new report from energy.gov that was emailed to me by one of my subscribers, 87% of all truck freight tonnage was shipped less than 250 miles. So even if you're conservative to maintain good battery health and you don't drop below a 10% state of charge and you don't charge to above 90% regularly, even during the winter, it looks like a Tesla semi can replace diesel semis for the vast majority of freight that is being transported. Yes, there are some cases where um, drivers need to go really long distances. And there are some cases where the Tesla semi may not be a good fit right now. But once again, more often than not, the amount of range you can get with a Tesla Semi is sufficient. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I also wanna say thank you to Luke and Craig for answering my question about cold weather performance of diesel semi trucks. And also thank you to at Big Ben from La Mesa for the helpful comments that have been left in past YouTube videos. I also wanna say thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.